This is part two of my series looking at emulators and emulation on the Oculus Quest. In part one we looked at side quest emulators for the Oculus Quest and in part three we're going to look at those emulators you need to be connected to a computer via Oculus Link in order to play. But in this part, part two, we're looking at Android emulators. Emulators designed for Android phones that can also be played on the Oculus Quest. Now initially you will need a computer to load these emulators and their ROMs but once you've done that you can then play them standalone. Now because these emulators are designed for phones and not for the Oculus Quest they can be a bit tricky to set up but once you've done that they will give you access to a wide variety of consoles because there are a lot of Android emulators out there. I've also done quite a few video guides in the past which I will link in a playlist in the comment section below. So, let's get into it. Before we get onto the emulators themselves, let's talk about Android emulators in general. Emulators that run on Android devices and therefore will run on your Quest will have the file extension .apk. While this video isn't a guide, I recommend two main sites to get your APK files, that is APK Pure and APK Mirror, which I will link in the description below. I've never had any trouble with these two sites, and you might know of other reliable sites to get your APK files from, but just always make sure to do your homework before downloading anything, so you don't end up downloading a malicious file like a virus. Now because these APK files are meant to be played on Android phones, they may not work well or even work at all with the Quest. So this is all very experimental. Although I will say that most of the APK files I have loaded onto my Quest have worked just fine. Just expect that you might need to play around with these things in order to get them to work properly and sometimes they might not work at all. Just be prepared for that. Now as a general instruction, you download the .apk file then connect your Quest to the computer and sideload the APK file to your Oculus Quest using SideQuest. That's probably the easiest way of doing it. And if you're not familiar with SideQuest or how to install it, there are plenty of tutorials if you do a quick search online and I will link a tutorial in the description below. Then I'd usually run the emulator at least once before installing any ROMs because sometimes you have to run the emulator first for the emulator folder to appear on your Quest. And once you've done that, turn your Quest on, connect it to the computer. When you put the headset on, you should see this dialog box. Just click allow, then access the Quest on your computer, find the ROMs folder, or you create a ROMs folder. Now, if you can't find the folder for the emulator, I usually just create a ROMs folder separately. And usually the emulator will allow me to locate that directory for the folder to then load the games inside. If you need to get the APK file from the Google Play Store, it gets a bit more complicated as it's not just a straightforward file download to your PC. But I have included one way to do this in one of my previous videos on the EPSXE emulator, which I will link below. These emulators are played on Oculus TV. Now Oculus TV unfortunately disables recording so you can't record footage when playing these emulators. Now I used to have methods of getting around this, but it seems Oculus have updated something which means my old methods do not work anymore. So I'm sorry to say, but I will need to be using footage from older videos when it was possible to demonstrate these games as I can't seem to record any new footage. But I have tested these emulators on the Quest 2 with positive results, so they do work for the Quest 2 also. Now let's get on to the emulators and I want to start by talking about light gun games. Now some emulators will have a touchscreen light gun function and these are the ones you can play light gun games on with your Quest controllers. For example EPSXE has this touchscreen light gun function so you just select the light gun that you want to use and then you can play light gun games using your Quest controllers. This all sounds great but it can be a bit limited. For one, you have this white pointer going from the controller to the screen that cannot be turned off. 
And secondly, you usually only have use of the trigger button. So if there are secondary fire buttons, for example, it might mean you can't use them at all, or you need to use the virtual buttons on screen, or perhaps connect a Bluetooth controller. For example, playing Time Crisis here, I'm using my second Oculus Quest controller to press the virtual buttons on screen to duck behind cover. And here playing House of the Dead 2, I'm using one of the buttons on the Xbox gamepad as a firing button. And to add to that, there seems to be some mixed results with getting some of these ROMs to work properly. Someone couldn't get Time Crisis to work, whereas I could and someone else reported that they could also. So like I said before, this is all very experimental stuff. There are a lot of things that can go wrong potentially here, particularly when it comes to light gun games. If you want to play light gun games, I'd actually recommend either installing a standalone touchscreen game developed specifically for Android phones. There are a lot of fun ones out there like this Grand Shooter or Overtouch. And in my experience, when compared to emulated light gun games, these tend to be a lot easier to install and work a lot better. Another option is to connect your Quest to your computer via Oculus Link and play an emulator like MUVR which has an actual light gun models and is a better experience in my opinion when it comes to playing light gun games. These emulators that you can only play when you're connected to your computer will be covered in part 3 of this video series so if you're interested in that topic make sure you check that video out when it's released. But if you do want to play light gun games using emulators on your Quest, I have a few videos devoted to this topic which I will link in the description below. Now with the exception of those light gun games that I just described, you will need a Bluetooth controller in order to play these emulators. Unfortunately, not all Bluetooth controllers work with the Quest. I personally use a new Xbox One S controller model number 1708 and this has not let me down. Now you can use your phone or your headset to connect a Bluetooth controller. To connect a controller using your phone, access the app, make sure your Oculus Quest headset is turned on and connected, then go into controllers. Once you're in controllers, put pair new controller, then pair gamepad. Then you make sure your controller can be detected via Bluetooth and then click the scan button and it should pick it up. Then you just select the controller that you want to use. Now if you want to connect a controller using your headset, you just put the headset on, go into settings, go into experimental, and you'll find a Bluetooth pairing option in there. Now let's talk about the Android emulators themselves. Now I can't touch on every Android emulator out there because there's a lot and that will mean this would be a very long video. But I'm going to just touch on some of the more notable ones and some of the ones that I really enjoy myself. And while much of this footage is taken from the Quest, I can confirm that I've also tested these same emulators on the Quest 2 and found them to work. The first Android emulator I want to touch on is called Scum VM. Now again, apologies, I can't record any footage of this as much as I want to, but it works just fine on the Quest 1 and Quest 2. The footage you are seeing here is from the PC and I'm using an Android emulator called Bluestacks. Scum VM allows you to play classic click and point adventure games on your Quest. I installed my original copy of Simon the Sorcerer and played it using my Oculus Quest controllers to point and click like a mouse and it worked just great. Although I did have to connect and use a Bluetooth controller and assign one of the buttons as a return key so then I could save the game. Without that button acting as a return key it wouldn't let me save the game and so that's what I mean when I say these emulators are a bit experimental when it comes to using them on the quest you might have to play around a bit just to get the settings just right now this emulator isn't the most difficult to set up but it isn't the easiest either you can check out this website here which i'll link in the description below that will give you the details for what files you need to copy over in order to play specific games now just one final thing to mention a very few of these classic click and point adventures have been converted to actually run specifically on Android phones. Simon the Sorcerer for example has had a remake. I haven't personally tried this version of Simon the Sorcerer as I didn't want to buy it again plus I don't like the graphics, I really prefer the pixelated version. But I just want to point out that these ports are out there and they may run on the Oculus Quest and if they do they probably run better than running them through Scum VM. Next we have the Android version of RetroArch. Now this is a front end for emulators. 
It contains cores, which are essentially emulators, and it has a lot of them. The idea is that rather than having multiple different emulators installed, all with different configuration files, RetroArch unites all of this in one space. Both your emulators and settings are united into one program with a single interface. Many of the emulators I've used on RetroArch will seem to work just fine. Say Muppin64 Plus, the N64 emulator, or the SNES emulator, SNES9X, and Genesis Plus GX, the Sega Genesis emulator. RetroArch is great because you can just easily download an emulator directly to your headset from the list of cores. Just bear in mind, because it covers so many emulators, it can get a bit complicated, and it's not as easy to set up as other individual emulators out there. So I'd recommend this one if you're looking to emulate multiple systems, but you might go for an individual emulator if you only want to emulate just one or two. Some of the individual emulators I can recommend are MAME for Droid. This is a MAME emulator that emulates arcade games, and it has a touchscreen light gun function, so that means you can play light gun games with your Oculus Quest controllers. And also the file size of the ROMs tends to be quite small, so it won't take up a lot of your precious storage space. The only drawback is that some of the ROMs can be a bit hit or miss. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. And it all comes down to what particular files are in the ROM set and their compatibility with the emulator. The other individual emulator I can recommend is the Android version of the Dolphin emulator but I only recommend this one for the Quest 2. The Dolphin emulator can run Wii and GameCube games. Now the setup isn't too hard, but it does push the original Quest's hardware to the limit, meaning you will probably experience frame drops in many games, and some of them will be unplayable if you play this emulator on the original Quest. But I can recommend it for the Quest 2, which seems to have just enough extra grunt to run these ROMs reasonably well. Just bear in mind, File sizes of these ROMs tend to be quite large and can fill up your Quest storage space quite quickly. My absolute favourite standalone emulators however are Pizza Boy GBC and Pizza Boy GBA. With Pizza Boy GBA make sure you click into versions so you can download the APK file and not the XAPK file which will not work. These emulators are for the Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advanced. This footage isn't actually from those two emulators, but it does give a good idea of how they look inside the Quest. The reason why I like these so much is that the emulators are very easy to set up and have a lot of functionality. There's also a massive back catalog of games for these systems and the ROMs take up a very little amount of space. These emulators also run very well and I don't think I've come across any issues when playing these ROMs on the Oculus Quest 1 or 2. And there we go, that's how to play Android emulators on the Oculus Quest and Oculus Quest 2. Thank you for watching all the way to the end of the video. If you've liked it, please remember to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe and hit that notification bell to be notified when the next part of this series is released. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.